Aloha, I'm your Minna Van Dyken MD. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people just like you obtain and maintain optimum health. Many of us have already been out and about, venturing into grocery stores and other essential businesses. We all eventually will have to go out to buy food and vital supplies to sustain us. And eventually, we're probably gonna have to go back to work. It's May 2020. The world is starting to reopen. People are going back to work. Italy, one of the countries hardest hit by the coronavirus, is starting to lift its nationwide lockdown. Here in the United States, many states are allowing stores to reopen and people to go back to work. But yet, the latest forecasts coming from the White House itself project deaths up to 3,000 per day. It's still not entirely safe to go out unprotected and without a strategy. Every time we go out, there's a chance we could be picking up viral particles. This puts us and our families at risk if we don't decontaminate properly when we get home. So the question we're going to have to answer today is, how do we decontaminate ourselves after we go out into a contaminated world? We'll share with you today how we decontaminate ourselves and our belongings and how we prevent bringing SARS-CoV-2 virus into our home. There's no guidelines on this. There's scant literature in scientific journals. I do have to make mention of this paper published in the Annals of Surgery. It's a great, great summary of a decontamination plan for frontline healthcare workers returning home. If you want to study all the details, read the paper. In addition to this, the suggestions that we've come up with for this video are based on huh, common sense. And of course, the science we currently know about the virus. Things like how long it lives on certain surfaces, how it's transmitted, and what is effective at deactivating these viral particles. We know that SARS-CoV-2 lives for different lengths of time on different surfaces, survives the longest on hard surfaces like glass, metal, and plastic. The coronavirus can remain infective for up to nine days on these surfaces. As a matter of fact, swaths taken from the Diamond Princess cruise ship found viral particles a full 17 days after passengers disembarked. It remains unknown, however, whether the virus was still viable and able to infect people at that point. Porous materials seem to fare a little better. Things like cardboard and fabric tend to absorb and trap the virus, making it difficult for it to transfer again. One study found no viable SARS-CoV-2 on cardboard beyond 24 hours. Luckily, there's many household cleaners that effectively kill the virus in less than a minute. For a detailed review on this, check out the video we made all about disinfecting your home with common cleaning agents. The link is in the description below. Examples of agents that work well are solutions of over 65% ethanol, 0.5% or greater hydrogen peroxide, 0.1% sodium hypochlorite or bleach. So, Back to the million dollar question, how can we prevent bringing the virus home with us? Well, let's start with what we can do to prepare before we even go out of our home. How we leave the home really matters. We should avoid wearing any accessories that could trap virus particles, things like earrings, rings, etc. Next, we should minimize things we bring with us. We should try not to bring excess tech or multiple bags. Just have one bag dedicated when you go out. Consider placing your cell phone in a disposable plastic bag and do not take it out of the bag till you get home. If your phone's waterproof, the plastic bag won't be necessary as you can wash your phone with soap and water. If you're venturing for work outside the home, here are some suggestions. Consider wearing a hair covering or a hat all day. If you have long hair, pull it back or braid it or put it in a bun. If you can, change into a separate outfit when you get to your workplace. If you're a healthcare worker particularly, this would be changing into a fresh set of scrubs. Have shoes dedicated to your workplace. Change into them as soon as you get there. Avoid wearing the same sweater or overcoat or jacket for multiple days. When you have to answer your phone, put it on speakerphone if you can, or use a headset if possible to avoid holding it next to your face. Regularly disinfect common services like your phone, any badges or credit cards, and eyewear. All right. After you're done at work or you're done collecting your supplies and you're ready to head home, here are some suggestions. If you're at work, remove your workplace shoes. If you changed into your work outfit, change back into your other clothes before you leave. Remove your clothes carefully. Pants should be removed by pulling from the ankles. Tops should be pulled by lifting them from the collar. Try not to fold them inside out. It's just going to put the contaminated area right next to your face. Any potentially infected clothes, sweaters or cloth hats you're bringing home, 
placed carefully in a plastic bag. If you're a healthcare worker, and especially if you've taken care of COVID-19 patients, consider showering if possible before you leave your workplace. And lastly, but most importantly, don't forget to wash your hands when you leave the workplace. Now, let's talk about transportation. How do you get to and from wherever you're going? Bikes? If it's your own bike, you're probably just fine. Just make sure to wipe the handlebars down before you head home. How about buses and other transportation? Well, you do your best to maintain a six foot distance between you and other passengers. Bring something with you to clean high touch surfaces or put something in between you and the surface. Like this little thingy, you can see it online everywhere these days. It can be used to push buttons, pull door handles, and even as a stylet to sign for credit card purchases. How about if you have a car? If you have a car that you're using, how do you manage it? How do you keep it clean? Well, the first tip that I have for you is make sure you have a sheet of plastic lining the base of the trunk to put dirty items on. Then when you leave your workplace, put your bag of dirty clothes in the trunk. Have some cleaning supplies with you so you can sanitize your hands on car entry and exit. Upon leaving your car, clean your steering wheel, dashboard, and other high touch surfaces like seat belts, your gear shifter, your turn signals, radios, door handles, touchscreen, whatever you frequently touch. Clean your phone again. Yes, again, your phone is gonna get a lot of love when it comes to cleaning. Think about the many places it touches and things, bacteria, viruses that can get on your phone. Oof. So let's talk about strategies once you get home from being out. It's really important to create a decontamination zone. So a good place for this would be in your garage. But if this isn't possible, make it immediately inside your home so you avoid tracking infected material into your home. Here's what should be in your decontamination zone. First, a laundry bag or a hamper. Second, a shoe rack or a tray. Third, some hand sanitizer. Fourth, decontamination wipes or a spray bottle filled with appropriate disinfectant and cleaning towels. The whole point of this zone is to try to bring the fewest potentially contaminated things inside your house. You're gonna to wanna to remove your shoes. Ideally, if you can remove them without touching them with your hands, that would be the best. So slide on, slide off shoes. Leave them on the shoe rack. Then carefully remove your clothing, place directly in the laundry bag or hamper. Be careful not to shake out your clothes before you put them in the laundry bag. Proceed directly to the shower. Then wash your clothing with hot water and detergent. If you have sanitized mode on your washer, it would be worth utilizing that feature, but soap and hot water will also work. Wipe down your phone, any car keys, credit cards, badge, or other items you may have had with you outside the home. Remember to go back and wipe down any surfaces encountered, including door handles used on entering the home, things like that. Once you're in your home, there's a few things to keep in mind. First, ensure there's good airflow. Open your windows or even air conditioning is helpful to increase the airflow. Wash your hands frequently. Be sure to wash them before and after preparing food, before eating, after using the toilet, and whenever your hands look dirty. When you flush the toilet, be sure to flush it with the lid closed to avoid aerosolizing viral particles. Remember to regularly clean all high touch surfaces like countertops, tabletops, doorknobs, bathroom fixtures, toilets, phones, keyboards, bedside tables, things like that. Well, those are the suggestions we have and what we're doing to decontaminate after we've been out and about, and especially after being exposed to known COVID positive people. It's working for us so far, knock on wood. What strategies are you using to make sure no virus enters your home? Let us know in the comments below. I love learning from you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You wanna show us some real support, subscribe. Until next time, guys, stay healthy, stay well, and aloha.